Hello, and welcome to Doug Wolf Drums channel. So, yes, you heard correctly, I am a drummer, and for whatever reason, I like making dumb videos about uh, projects that I do on my aquarium. So, that's what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to install an occupancy sensor and some LED lighting to make the stand underneath your aquarium lit up so you can actually see what you're doing. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is go over a list of tools and materials that you're going to need to do the job. Uh, the materials could possibly be exchanged out for other items, but we'll get into that. So you're going to need a drill, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver, a pair of Lyman pliers or Kleins, you need a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of wire strippers, and you'll need a utility knife and maybe some electrical tape, possibly. All right, so now for materials for the electrical box. Uh, this is a possible option. Uh, you'll have to get a special faceplate for it. I don't like the way that it looks, though. Um, these two here are just not going to be big enough to fit everything that you need. Uh, they're not deep enough. And this is what I ended up using. So it's 7 or $9 from Home Depot. There's going to be plenty of room for all the wiring in there, plenty of depth for the occupancy sensor, and it's got knockouts where you can fit the wire through. So it's a good option for something like this. And then we're going to finish it off with a wall plate or a cover of your choice, uh, the fits your style. So next thing is the occupancy sensor itself. The one on the left here, the blue one is a Leviton. That's what I used on the 75 gallon. And the one on the right is a Lutron. That is what we're going to be using on the 125 gallon. Either of them will work. There's other brands that will work. Um, just keep in mind, these things are pretty expensive. So just find one that fits and suits your needs because some of them have a lot more options than other ones do. And sometimes options that you don't even really need for, for this type of setup. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The next thing to keep in mind is that the wiring is going to be different from one manufacturer to the next. So the way that I wire this one today is not necessarily how you would wire the previous one or the next one that you do. This right here is just a standard power cord. We're going to cut it up, so make sure you don't ever plan on using it for anything again. You want to try and get one that's, you know, two foot, maybe four foot long, just as long as it reaches your closest power outlet. Um, the next thing we're going to go over is the lighting, which this can be, you don't have to use this setup. What I'm using here is, uh, my brother's an electrician, so I basically get this stuff for free. And um, this, this is your LED strip. It's got adhesive on the back, and then what I'm going to end up using, it, it has three holes in there that you can put screws through to attach to your stand. This is a second light that we're going to use. This is the driver. This is what powers uh, your lighting. So you could get a light fixture from Home Depot, LED light fixture, um, that's going to be an all-in-one type thing. You would take the, the cord or the plug off the end of it and basically wire it into your occupancy sensor the way that I'm going to be wiring um, this setup in there today. Anyone would work. It's whatever works for you. The one thing that you will have to pay attention to for sure is the type of lighting that you have versus the occupancy sensor. Um, some people want to have dimmable items. You know, this is not dimmable, for example. Some switches and whatnot do not work with LED lighting, so you just need to make sure you're purchasing the right thing. And this here is just a stringer that's going to hook our two lights together underneath the tank. One thing I should probably mention is if you're not comfortable with electricity, um, this isn't complicated, but obviously, you know, move forward at your own risk. First thing we're going to do is get the power cord ready. So we're just going to cut the end right off of that. We're not going to need it anymore. We're going to take and we're going to strip the, the black uh, shield back probably about six inches, maybe a little bit more. When you do that, make sure that you don't nick the inner wires. Um, they're going to be your green is ground, white is neutral, and black is hot. Make sure there's no bare copper exposed on them. Go ahead and cut the excess off. And then we're going to take our wire strippers and we're going to cut about an inch or strip about an inch of wire off of the end of each one of those. Then go ahead and twist the ends of that copper stranded wire just to get it nice and tight. So we're basically done with the power cord for right now. Um, that's going to plug into the receptacle later, but we'll get there. So for this occupancy sensor, the blue wire is not going to be used. Cap it off. Uh, if you use one of the other brands, these instructions could be totally different. If you use a different driver, the instructions could be different. So just keep that in mind. But the first thing that we're going to do is the blue wire on this driver is your neutral and that's going to go to the white wire coming from your extension cord next wire is going to be the black wire from your extension cord 
is going to go to one of the black wires on the occupancy sensor. Make sure you get a nice tight connection with your wire nuts and that it's not loose. Next wire you're gonna do is the brown wire from the driver is going to be going to the other black wire on the occupancy sensor. And the last thing that we're gonna take care of is your ground. So you're gonna to need to get a green grounded nut that is going to attach to the backing plate of the box that we're using to house everything. Um, you're gonna attach your green wires and you're gonna to need to make uh, a jumper wire. So you can get a piece of uh, bare copper wires, fine and you're gonna wire nut all that together. It's just gonna give you a little bit of extra room and make it not so tight um, that your ground is reaching to get to that uh, ground nut that you have on the backing plate. Last thing you're gonna do, and this is very important, give a good hard tug on all the wires in those wire nuts. Make sure everything's tight, no loose wires. You want it all secure. You don't wanna cause a fire or any other electrical issues down the road, very important. Got this all put together, ready to go, and then I realized I didn't record it to show you how that it gets put together. So no worries, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit later in the video. Uh, all I'm doing here is just testing to make sure that it works before I hook it up to the tank because I don't wanna put, you know, have it installed on the stand and then it not function and have to rip it back down. And uh, those were some close-ups. If you go back and pause the video, it'll show you where, uh, there's three locations where the screw holes can go if you use the screws as opposed to using the uh, adhesive backer. So right now uh, I had to do a water change and I figured this would be a good time, some downtime to like kind of cover what I'm gonna be doing next and just a couple tips and different things like that. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to address is yes, I know I have Central American and South American cichlids in the same tank with each other. It's just temporary, there's a new home coming, let's move forward. Um, the first thing that I should actually address that's important is I never would have actually wired this the way that I did um, on a table and then transfer everything over to the, the stand or the box under the stand. Um, it's it just, it's not the easiest way to do it, but I wanted to do it that way so everyone could see in the video how the wiring actually takes place. Um, second thing here, my doors are off. I didn't do that intentionally. I just never got around to putting them on. So if you want to take yours off, it makes it easier to get in and out of the uh, from under the stand. Go right ahead. And uh, the third thing is my stand is different than yours, um, I'm sure. So there's a lot of customization and different options and things you can do with your own stand. So just be creative and you'll figure it out. All right, so what I'm doing here is I've installed one LED strip light. I didn't even install it. I just have it sort of sitting in the stand up top. I wanted to see what one would look like. At this point, I wasn't sure how many strips I was going to install under here. Um, so I hooked up the one. It's The wires are not gonna stay that way. But we just hooked up one here and I'll turn it on and you'll see, you'll kind of get an idea. Um, it really lights up that area, but it makes the other areas have just a lot of shadows. Um, and you still can't see if you're in there working on your filters or whatever, it's not sufficient enough. So I'm thinking, okay, put one on either end. Uh, so I just tried a bunch of different configurations. The other thing is, where do you put the light? Do you have it facing straight down towards the, the ground? Do you put it on the back wall facing towards you, which that looks terrible. You'll see right there, that's not gonna work. And then um, what I ended up deciding to do was on the first and the third door, having them on the inside wall. And then in the center, going straight down. So it's uh, light distributed fairly evenly all throughout the tank. Um, and when I took that video, it was it was nighttime at my house and it was uh, pretty dark in there. My living room is not very bright, so something to keep in mind. Here, I'm just uh, attaching the, the LED strips to the tank. I had to get creative there. Uh, the, the space was too far between. The light fixture wouldn't fit there. So you just gotta make, it, make up stuff as you go. And uh, if you're good with your hands, you'll be fine. And then this is the third and the final strip. And that was it for the strip install other than hooking up the wires, which this next clip here is gonna show you how I ran the wires. Uh, not perfect, like that's probably just temporary. I'll actually you know attach them with some straps or whatever but just so you can get the idea. And when I recorded this, I had to turn the exposure way down on my camera because those lights are so, so bright. Um, you couldn't even see when I didn't turn the exposure down. All right, so this next part is the actual install of, of how I did this, and it's still not how I would really do it, but 
this is correct. You'll attach your backing plate, you'll attach a ground screw, but you won't have all the wiring already done. What you would do in reality is you would put the backing plate up, put your box up, then fish your wires through the box, strip all the wires back, wire them into the switch, push your switch in, and then put your cover on. So we sort of did things backwards, but for video purposes, that's okay. And here I'm trying to figure out where I want to put the driver at. It wasn't a great place anywhere, but I set it on right there because it was close and it was easy. And here you'll see what a difference this makes in a dark living room when you can't see. The, uh, the sad thing is it's actually underneath my aquarium is lit up better than the rest of my house. I don't have lights that, that adequate, um, but that's okay because at least I can see what I'm working on when I'm underneath there. And right here is just a front view uh, before we put the doors back on and set the sensor. And here it is, the moment that no one has been waiting for. Uh, the finished product, I got the doors back on. That probably took me, honestly, just as long as actually doing all the wiring and everything, um, just because they don't line up correctly. But uh, German Shepherd in the way, that's pretty common in my house. I have two of them, and they are always right by my feet or by the door, wherever I'm at, no matter what I'm doing. Um, at any rate, so with the occupancy sensor that I installed on this one, uh, I didn't make any adjustments from factory yet. The only thing that I would probably adjust on this one for my own personal liking is the timeout feature. So from factory, it's set to five minutes and I'll probably end up bumping that. I think the lowest you can go is one minute. And what that means is when you walk in the room, it's a, a motion sensor. Um, it senses your motion, turns the light on. Well, I shouldn't say when you walk in the room. That's if you're using it as a sensor for like your living room lights or something like that. But once it senses motion, kicks on. So then what keeps it going, say you sit on your couch and watch TV and you're not moving is, um, I don't know how that it works really because I'm not smart like that. But it, it senses that you're in the room. And uh, if you're just sitting in the room and you've already shut the doors to the aquarium stand, somehow this thing knows that you're still like in there and it won't shut off until after you leave the room five minutes later. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that back to one minute. Um, it's super easy to adjust on this one. Um, there's just a button on the front that you use to like a light switch to turn it on and off. And you would click it so many times to go to the various different defaults and settings. Uh, the one that I installed on the 75 gallon was a little bit more, uh, adjustable, uh, customizable, but it was also a little bit more confusing. Uh, there was an extra cover on the front of that one that you have to remove and there's uh, little dials that you would turn with a screwdriver and that's how you adjust uh, your sensitivity and your range uh, for motion and also for whatever that magical thing that this stuff does where it knows that you're in the room. And here, just for the hell of it, I shut the, on all the other videos that you're seeing, um, I had the lights in my living room on, which are just a few lamps. I don't have any overhead lighting. So I just decided to shut all the lights off in the living room completely. And you get an idea as to how bright this thing is, um, even with nothing else on. Now uh, you could get under there with no other lighting, not that you would do this, but um, it's definitely more than enough for sure. And if I'm thinking about it, uh, last thing I wanna say is I, it was probably about a two hour project. Um, not including video editing, and I, I didn't have to go to Home Depot for once, so I got lucky there. I think um, next video I might do some cable management and try and clean this area up a little bit, but I'm tired of talking, so see ya.